Hey guys, welcome back to another day of zoo school. We are behind the scenes in the reptile house again today, and you are gonna get the chance to meet one of our ambassador animals, Tiny. Let's see if he wants to come out. Hello everyone, my name is Heather. I'm an educator here at the zoo, and I am here with Kendra and Tiny, our red-tailed boa. So Tiny here is one of our newest ambassador animals, and he is doing awesome. Uh, red-tailed boas themselves are pretty docile snakes, which is really, really helpful when handling him because he is a pretty big snake. So to start off, red-tailed boas get their name because of this little hint of red at the base of their tail. So it can kind of vary. You can see a little bit. His is a little bit more brown. It just kind of depends on the different snakes. It can go anywhere from browns to grays to reds and they think that they have that red color because in the wild they'll actually use that little red tail to kind of lure in their prey so they'll kind of flick it around on the jungle floor these guys live in jungles where it's nice and humid and they'll flick it around to try to get the attention of mammals because it might look like a fallen fruit or maybe a flower on the bottom. Um, these guys are really, really, really big snakes. They can grow anywhere from six to 12 feet. Our friend Tiny here is probably around the seven foot mark um, and they can weigh anywhere from 25 to 30 pounds. So the size of their prey changes as they get older and larger. So they might eat rats, mice, some opossums, um, they can eat other small mammals and maybe even other reptiles. When they're young, they spend a lot of time in the trees. However, as they mature and they grow a little bit, they spend a lot more time on the forest floor. So their camouflage kind of helps them in both situations. So if you can look at the top of Tiny's body, you'll see a lot of tan and brown and some black markings. And that kind of helps him blend in with some tree branches, but also his belly is a little bit lighter too. So if he goes up into those trees, his stomach will blend in with the sky and the sun coming through the forest. Um, canopy. So that is a kind of camouflage called counter shading, which not only helps him blend in with the trees, like I said, but also picture him on the forest floor. He'll blend in with a lot of different leaf litter. So in the rainforest, it's super humid, which is really, really important. And we have to make sure that we mimic that in captivity. These guys need a lot of heat and a lot of humidity. So snakes are something that is called cold blooded. Reptiles are cold blooded, but does that mean that their blood is cold? No, it just means that they have to rely on an outside source of heat to help warm their body. So Tiny's body temperature is going to be exactly the same as what's around him. So if he needs to go and cool off, he needs to find some shade or some water or a nice cool rock. Or if he wants to warm up, he has to go out in the sun. What are you doing sticking your tongue out at me? Do you guys know what he's doing when he's sticking his tongue out? So when snakes are sticking their tongue out like this, he's not being rude, he's actually smelling. So you'll notice that his tongue is forked, right? Some reptiles and snakes have a forked tongue and that actually helps them find prey in the wild. So when he sticks out his tongue, he can tell which side the scent is coming from more. So if, if a little mouse is over here and he sticks out his tongue, he says, oh my goodness, the mouse is off to my right hand side because of that forked tongue. So that really helps him and snakes have a crazy jaw. So when he goes to eat something in the wild, he is going to first try to bite it, right? So he'll go and I'll try to snap at it. But what happens is he doesn't have venom. He isn't poisonous. So he is a constrictor, hence boa constrictor, right? So he is going to grab a hold, just like he's doing to catch his arm here a little bit. <laughs> That's just to help him keep balance, but it's good to show his muscles and everything. So he is going to grab it and he's gonna wrap his whole body around it. And he gives quite strong hugs, one could say. So he is going to hug and squeeze his prey as strong as he can, and that will actually suffocate it and kill it. And then he'll actually have to eat it whole. And and that's where his jaw comes in. So snakes are able to unhinge the bottom part of their jaw in order to open their mouths that much wider. So I'll kind of show you guys with my fingers here. So see these two fingers? 
and the bottom one. This is like how our jaw works, right? We imagine we like chomp like this, but if you flip that over and you spread out all of your fingers, that's how a snake's jaw works. So not only are they able to open it even wider, but they're also able to unhinge the bottom part in order to get that prey item into their mouth. So Tiny is a really big snake, but should I be worried about him eating me? No, because snakes will eat something the size of the largest part of their body. So on Tiny here, it's about this big. So he might eat a rabbit. Um, we feed him rats here at the zoo. Um, we don't feed anything live. It's a little bit dangerous to feed anything live. So everything is already dead and we just thaw it out and make it nice and warm so that they think that they're eating something live. So he's gonna eat a rat and he's not gonna look at me as prey. So I have nothing to be afraid of when I'm here with him. <laughs> he's sticking his tongue out again. So his eyes are really cool too. So I'll tell you what, you should never have a staring contest with a snake because snakes don't actually have any eyelids. They kind of just have a clear layer over top of their eyes that's sort of like a contact lens that helps protect their eyes when they are hunting or when he's slithering around on the forest floor or in the trees. But that being said, he can't close his eyes because it's just a clear lens that's on top. So if you were to ever try to have a staring contest with a snake, you're gonna lose every time. So, and that is really neat because snakes will actually shed that layer off their eyes. So when snakes get bigger, they will shed their skin. So when the skin is too tight, he'll kind of rub his nose on a rock or something and he will slither right out of it. Thanks, Tiny. So, since I just told you guys that Tiny and snakes are awesome at having staring contests, our challenge for you is to have a staring contest and show us who wins. And don't forget to hashtag CMC Zoo School.